Psalms chapter 142, a machil, a of David, a prayer when he was in the cave, 1 Samuel 24. This is where he's in the cave and Saul comes in and he cuts off Saul's skirt. But he's in the cave because he's running from King Saul. He's being chased. All the world is against David, set in the background for this song. There's trouble. He's not happy. He's not in a good place. You can imagine with his military man, you know, what's going on here? We've got the strength and we're hiding. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. So he's talking audibly. And he's talking to the Lord. He's not talking to no man. Though there may be man there. Is, is it okay to talk to yourself? David does it. I believe it was Nehemiah that conferred with himself. With my voice unto the Lord I did make my supplication. I made, I made my cause. I made the problems and anxieties and troubles and I poured out my complaint before him, God. Is it okay to complain when you're speaking to God? I'm one of them few people that tell God how you feel. You don't think God knows? And if you put on a pretense before God, you know, if you're angry with God, you don't... And you go to God, lovely dovey, and just have, and God sees your, your state. God sees what you're really feeling. And you got troubles and problems, and, and like David's having right now. Don't play, don't complain to the men that are with you. Complain to God. God, you know what? This is ridiculous. I've been anointed king, and you still got that man running around, and he's out to kill my 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 life. His his wife married his daughter. She ends up marrying another. Come on, God, where's my throne? Why am I hiding in this cave? God, I don't have the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. And people complain when they, they read some of my thing, the, the, the troubles and anguish I've, I've gone through being a widow. You ought not be saying stuff like that. David's complained before the Lord. All right, maybe I shouldn't be. I don't think, I don't, I don't call it complaining on Facebook. I, I'm just, just writing how I feel to God. I'm not voicing it, I'm typing it. And for others to help pray. But he complained before God, I will show, I show before him God my trouble. Like God doesn't know. The Holy Spirit has recorded to me. I've, I've heard a couple people, I don't pray to God for myself, I pray. God knows what trouble David's in. God knows where David is. And David says, I'm complaining unto God, and I'm telling God what my troubles are. And the Holy Spirit records that down. And there's no rebuke. Now, the problem is, some of our complaining... And some of our troubles, if we do take it to God honestly and truly, there's one thing that's going to happen. If we are in the wrong, and we are at times, God will make it known. God will not allow us to complain when we've got troubles and problems. And blame others when there's no blame but ourselves, but... David is true. David has got a conflict here. David is whole life. And it's sorry for David that this is the only touch of the iceberg, King Saul. Now, 
You're angry with God? Get off by yourself and tell God you're angry. You don't like how God's doing anything? Get off and tell him. God knows what's in your heart. In your heart, get off by yourself and tell him. I have. There have been no lightning bolts from heaven. And yet God will speak to me about the sins in my life and I confess them. I, I get them right before. And I got a sweet fellowship and God uses me. And God will use David in a mighty way once he is put on that throne. David doesn't build a temple, but he gathers all the material. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me. And he's on the run. There's one point. I mean, he, they're, they're running around this mountain. You know, that, that, that song, he'll be coming around the mountain when he comes. That's David and Saul. And listen, they're running around this mountain. And we just read it. You know, he's getting tired. He's getting weary. He's getting scared. And you've got to know there are times that his own soldiers are probably giving him a hard time. Some Christians and people think, oh, we're not to feel overwhelmed. We're not to have troubles and problems. Feeling. That's a bull. Even Jesus groaned in the spirit. Even Jesus got angry at people. We ought to love the brethren. And sometimes when those Pharisees and scribes and all them came, you know, he said, love your enemies. When they came to him, you know, he groaned in the spirit. He got angry with them. He got angry at the disciple. What are you guys fighting about now? What do you mean you didn't believe the women when they, when the angels told him that I risen? David's a mighty man after God's own heart. He says, I'm overwhelmed. He says, I'm complaining. I've got troubles. He didn't go to a psychiatrist. He didn't go to a buddy. He went to God. There wasn't, they, there wasn't anything that David told God that God didn't. That God's not been him. Like, Whoa, really? Oh, David, I didn't know. God's not that. God knows how David. God wants us to pray. God wants us to ask. And God wants us to complain to him. You know what Israel did was wrong with their murmurs and, and complaints? They were griping and complaining to other Israelites. Why don't you complain to me? Because God would have pointed out their sin. God would point out their trouble. Man don't want to go to God because they're afraid of the answer God will give them. And sometimes the answer is, yeah, David, you are in trouble. Yeah, David, you've got a reason to complain. Then thou knowest my path. I'm, I'm griping, I'm complaining. I'm overwhelmed. You know what's going on. You know where I'm going with this. I don't know where I'm going. As far as I know, I'm in this cave and I might die tomorrow. David has no idea if this is before Saul shows up. It has to be because he comes out of the cave. All right, David's in this cave. He has no idea within a few moments or hours, maybe days, that his enemy is going to come into this cave. He's griping and complaining, saying, Lord God, I'm being mistreated. Lord God, I am being chased. Lord, I am having troubles. Lord, I am overwhelmed. What do you guys say about it, God? And then comes Saul. What do you, uh, what do you imagine what David's heart was that moment? And Saul goes to sleep. Nabashai and, and David's man, let's kill him. Let's come on, let's let's get him, let's kill him. Here he is, here's the time. David's like, no. And David cuts off a piece of his skirt. Do you hear what I said? The man was wearing the skirt. Men should not wear what pertains to a woman, a woman shall not prepare to a man. Saul had a skirt and David cut a piece of it. Okay. 
And David got out of that cave and his heart smoked him that I shouldn't even done that to the king. I this I misrecep I misrepresented and I mistreated the king just by cutting his skirt. And you got Christians today bad mouthing Democrats and bad mouthing Republicans, and they have no change of heart. David cut off the skirt of Saul after he's complaining to God, after he's telling God, I'm overwhelmed. God, the troubles I'm God. And he bows his head and calls out Saul and says, Saul. And you know what God, you know what God did? God gave mercy to David by King Saul. You know why you know God gave King Saul to give mercy to David? Because if God didn't step in, God didn't intervene, King Saul would have had David killed. Have he not, how many times he threw that javelin at him? And threw it at Jonathan once he got so angry with David. You know what God said? I heard that complaint. I heard your troubles. I heard you're overwhelmed. Watch this. He's here. Lord, this is a just do what you're going to do. Now, can you imagine what David felt after him and I don't want to say made peace, but things were I'm going to say okay. Imagine when David's walking away from that, and you know, he wasn't killed. King Saul <clears throat> repented tongue in cheek. Imagine if he thought back to this prayer. Wow. Oh, God, you really handled that. I'm walking out. I'm alive and he's alive. And then he would run back in the next trouble. But God heard his complaint. Who do you think God sent into that cave? Deal with your trouble right here and now, David. God wanted to see what David would do. Are you so complaining? Are you so in trouble? Are you so un... Being with uh, well overwhelmed, if I put your enemy in your hands, and I'll have a couple people that the devil's going to say kill him. What are you going to do, David? When the, when his army, when his troops say kill him, the first moment out of David's heart was no, I can't. He's the Lord's anointed, and God saw that. Maybe if you went to God as you're feeling, as you are to God, not anybody else, and complained and told God your complaint, told God your troubles, tell him you're overwhelmed, and that he knows the path. That didn't stop all David's troubles. But look what happened in the events around that cave. King Saul left that thing like, oh. and I think David told him, he said, these men wanted to kill you, king. Now who's got the trouble? Saul does. He's got the, he's got the, I've been chasing David for nothing. David's walking away like, what was I afraid of? In the way wherein I walked, past ten. Have they privily laid a snare for me? Yes. True. That's the Christian law. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, unless the Lord steps in, tomorrow, Saturday morning, I know they brought that stereo, to, and they probably even make sure when, when they leave the house, make sure I got that stereo so we can blast them out. And I have dealt with God, and I have complained to God. I have told God it is troubling. They're not hearing your word. Lord God, how can you? And God has set forth where we don't deal with a DJ anymore. As of right now, we can, by the agreement that the lawyers met, I can use the amplification, even though there, there's the music. God says, okay, I just wanted to hear your complaint. I want you to tell me. Listen, if you don't go to your mom and dad and say, Mom, Dad, I want a bicycle. I want a blue bicycle. 
you don't tell your mom and dad, you the chances are is zilch you're going to get a blue bicycle. If they get you a bicycle, maybe not the color. Everybody else on the street has a bicycle. I don't think it's fair. They got a bicycle and I don't have one. Bible says we see, receive not because we ask not. David's asking God, I'm in trouble. You going to help me here? Jesus says, ask in his name. Seek, knock, and ask. Ask, seek, and knock. They're trying to catch me. We've seen this in previous uh, Psalm 141, verse 9. I looked on my right hand, and behold, but there was no man that would know me. Oh, David, I know how you feel. I just checked my Facebook today and saw another Christian friend unfriended me. Don't you have to go up to say why? I meet these Christians, and they find out who I am, where my convictions are, where I stand. Where do they go? Where do they go? They fall by the wayside. They're enemies. They are enemies of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because that's what I preach, and that's what I teach. And I, I teach to edify, and they don't want to be edified. They don't like what I say, stuff like that. You're an enemy of the word of God. And you don't even have enough gall to come up to me and tell me what my what your complaint is. So not only are you an enemy of the Bible, but you're a wimp. And the other day I made a post about you know I don't I don't vote. I preach the gospel. A guy dealt with me and I went back and forth. Finally he just got aggravated with me and said goodbye. Well I'm not I'm and unfriended me. Okay. And about an hour later after that, another friend unfriended me, probably for the same cause. Somebody who knew my family, knew my wife, Lisa, and all that, went to church. And and I, I can, listen, I can see when you unfriend me. And I have access. I can go find out if, I know one person unfriended me, and they're not on Facebook. Okay, I think. But I can go and find out if you're still on Facebook and I am no longer your friend. I got one person, every once in a while, I'll, I'll go friend them. Two people. And they may they may friend me and then after a while, they unfriend me. It's definitely what stuff what I'm saying. What am I saying that's so unbiblical? What am I saying that is against God? I looked in my right hand. You ain't there. That's the story of my life. That's the story of churches, pastors, and Christians. And you wonder why I'm fed up and angry and all that in my life. And you wonder why I'm praying to God to give me a wife. My wife, Lisa and Tracy, were there more than when Christians were. When I was kicked out of church because I didn't like the VBS decoration, my wife stood by my side. And said I was correct and they were wrong. And it's true. All they that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Look to your right hand. Where are they? They're gone. And they're probably out living worldly, ungodly lives. And some of them, I can mention right now, are not even in the church. I'm still in church. I'm still serving the Lord. And the Lord's still using me. <laughs> to you. I hope God doesn't give you the mansion next door to mine. Wouldn't it be interesting if, if I do get a city in the millennium? Wouldn't it be interesting if God takes those that were with me and left me because they got offended? Would it be funny? They got, come here, guys. You see this one you didn't like? All right. He's the king and you're going to be under him. Whoa. Look upon your head, no crowns, no nothing. Look upon his head.
And David had an army. Three of his army members were his own family of his sister. And they were trouble. Of Zariah. But there was no man that would know me. Know me. They didn't even, David, I don't know who David is. That's Peter. Oh, you were with him. No, not me. I don't know what you're talking about. Shut up. Hey, weren't you with me? Hey, but blankety blank. I don't you blankety blank blank tell me. That's Peter. What was the other disciples? Only John was at the cross of Jesus. I've been there. I know what David. Refuge, a shelter, a protection failed me. I've gone into churches. They, they learn what, what I teach. They learn how I stand. Uh, get rid of them. I had one church tell me not to come back. And this is a church that we were there that we witnessed. The fact is that one woman said, hey, I've been baptized three times and baptized her to four. I, that same church, there's nothing but the King James Bible here. And then when a, a visiting preacher came, took over service and had another Bible. And I went and addressed that preacher and I went and addressed the, the pastor of that church. I'm the one that got rebuked. You had no call to speak to Yes, I did, because he brought to my family a perverted Bible. You said that you would not allow any other Bible, and then you know, he just blew it up because they were friends. David said, listen, where are they? Where can I go for refuge? Where is he now? He's in a cave. And his enemy is going to come in shortly to take a nap. No man, I marked my Bible, I can't, cared, I think that's cared, that's the first time that word shows up, cared, no man cared for my soul, David's talking to God, I've been there, where were all my friends in the churches that, that we're going from? And I told the Lord, I've, I've named the names to the Lord. Will be to you. You know, I am the same place where I am when I started and growing more in the Lord. God's given me a street ministry. God's given me a Bible study. God's given me more ministries throughout the year. God's given me many gospel tracts that got out. God's given me a family that listens to the word of God. Will be to you that left. What's your 30 pieces of silver? Psalms 142, verse 5. I cried unto the Lord, O Lord, I said, Thou art my refuge. God, no one will take me in. God, no one will listen to me. Who's listening to David right now in a cave? God be the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit recorded, and the Holy said, Ho Holy Spirit said, <coughs> excuse me. What do you think about David complaining to God? Isn't that just so arrogant? David complained to God, and the Holy Spirit said, Father, yes. When we write the Bible, put Psalm 142 in there. Okay. Put that in there. And David says, though man has left me, God, you never left me. In that darkened cave, God sat there and pulled up a chair and said, tell me, David. And God didn't charge David anything. And in a moment or however long, 
Saul's going to come in and life is going to change for David. I mean, can you just see God? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And when David's done, I don't know how long. He, um, okay, roll the time. Saul, come on in. Come on in. I mean, God already knows what, what Saul's going to do. God already knows what David's going to do. God knows what's going to happen at the end of that day. How do you feel now, David? I feel better that you that you listen to me. And David knew the, his men a little more, too. Those men right there, my cousins, I think, his sister's children, those guys are out for blood. I gotta be weary of them, because that's the that's the Lord's anointed, and I'm not dead as we're walking away. And can you just imagine David with, with a few of his close army buddies? Do you realize I went up and ripped that skirt right off? <laughs> Did you see Saul in his eyes how he repented? I thought you were troubled, David. I thought you were complaining. You know, God does that for me on the street ministry. I'll be there. God, they're not listening. God, they're cussing me out. And I'll get somebody to come up on the shoulder, pat me on the shoulder, and say, you're doing a good job. Somebody will come up, shake my hand. I'm thankful you're here. Or I'll see somebody drive up and roll down the window and ask my daughter for a gospel track. God says, I'm hearing. God listens. And God is not mean as another human being. He'll listen. But people don't do that because they know if we are in the wrong, God will address it. The people will not ask God what sins are bothering you that I am doing. They won't ask God because they're afraid that God will say, that sin that you love. I'm bothered by that. And I don't want people to leave my right. I don't want to be alone. I don't want my friends to leave me. I don't want my, my idiotic baby Christian friends in church who won't stand up with a man of God or stand with, with the cowards and the women. I, I don't want them to leave me. You can have them. Because when Peter is denying Jesus, John was by Jesus' side. And John is called the beloved disciple or apostle. John is the one that put his ear to the heartbeat of God. And when there are men and women out there serving the Lord... And Christians give them a hard time. And Christians avoid them. And church treat them like the plague. God's like, come tell me your troubles. Yep. What did Paul write? All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. What did John write? Marvel not if the world hates you. Didn't Jesus say, no, not the world hated me first before I hate you? If they hate you, does not the scripture say, if they hate my words, they hate me, they hate the Father? Friend, if you're on the battlefield for Jesus Christ and they hate you, scripture with scripture, oh, okay. I see what you're doing, God. You're separating me to make me a cleaner vessel. I'm the piece of pottery, you're the potter, and that, that, that person that was in my life, oh man, that's a big stick, I ain't gotta be, get that out of here. What's that rock doing in that, get that rock out of here. All right, now I'll go back to work. And you know what you do with pottery? When you remove all those imperfections and you've got what you, what you want, and then you gotta put it under fire.
Thou art my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. I'm only living because of God. I guarantee right now there may be people who are tonight or tomorrow morning, as far as the, the, the street ministry in Daytona Beach we have, I guarantee there are people right now at some point today to tomorrow morning at the farmer's market. Uh, you know what? It's getting time. and that, I wish that guy would drop dead. I wish that guy would just die. I wish somebody would kill him. Because he's disrupting business. I don't like what he says. And God's, Lord willing, tomorrow morning I'll wake up. And the weather's nice. Things are well. God wakes me up. I pray. We get ready. And God's given me one more day to go preach at the farmer's market. One more day for us to get gospel tracks out. They might not like it. But God says in Romans chapter 10, and he quotes out of the Old Testament, I think it's Isaiah. He says, I love the feet that carry the good tidings. You know, Christians may be embarrassed. I, we had one Christian family come out. Oh, you preach about hell. We're not coming no more. It's hell, hell, hell. God likes it. I've been doing it six years. Had another Christian come out. Well, you try to correct me. I don't like it. I got mad at you. I'm sorry for getting mad at you, but I, I don't want to be around you no more. Okay, fine. I looked in my right hand. There's no more there. God's there. God's listening. And God said, well, you know what? I'll send somebody to, just to, I'm still with you. And God does that. I'm still living. I'm dealing with another uh, widower. And he, he's, he's upset that his, his, his spouse has died. And I say, you know, we live one more day because God has use for us. And I know, we want to go home to glory. But it's not time for us to go to glory. And there are times I pray to the Lord, Lord, take me home. Come on, I'm done. And God's like, no, you're not done. You're not done. I'm not finished with you. Land of the living. You couldn't commit suicide if God didn't want you dead. Attend unto my cry. He's, he's either crying or he's screaming out. Either he's in tears or he's in anguish and he's crying out, Lord! What is the problem here? I don't like this. Where, oh God, Lord, I'm alone. I'm fed up. I'm in this stupid cave. Oh Lord, I got troubles, I got problems. You know, some Christians tell you if you got that kind of attitude, that's not how you should say to God. You shouldn't be talking about, you shouldn't be talking that way to God. They wouldn't be writing those things like that. You don't know. You got to be honest with God. For I am brought very low. I'm in a cave. Darkness. I'm in defeat. I'm running from the enemy. I am not on the throne. Where's my friend Jonathan? Jonathan is hanging out with the enemy. Good buddy you are. Deliver me from my persecutors. That would be Saul. And the nation of Israel. Saul has gathered the nation of Israel to go after one man. David. Shimei is going to come up pretty soon and cast stones and curse it be David. Curse it be David. 
Absalom's going to come up to David and try to search the throne. For they are stronger than I. David, Christian, not if God's on your side. When I grew up as a little boy, there was an advertisement. It used to be nationwide, is on your side. No, 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 no. You know what that was? That was get a piece of the rock. That was an insurance company. I've got the rock. I don't have the piece. I've got the rock. And he's on my side. As long as I do right. But even if I do wrong, the Bible says he'll never leave me or forsake me. And as a father would correct his child, so God corrects me when I'm wrong. Listen, if I'm doing right and I got a problem with the devil and I got a problem with the devil's people or I got a problem with other Christians, Father, I've got a complaint. Father, I'm in big trouble. Father, I feel overwhelmed. Chapter 142, verse 2 and verse 3. Go to God. And woe be if they be other children of God and they are in the wrong. Oh, whoa. But be careful yourself. You better not be in the wrong. Bring my soul out of prison. Now, he's not in prison, but he's in a cave. And from the prisons in the Old Testament, that was not a big change. They're described as dungeons and muck. Jeremiah was put into prison and he almost drowns in the muck and mire. That I may praise thy name. Who's going to get me out of trouble? Who's going to get me out of my distress? God. You know who my bounty hunter is that paid my bail? The blood of Jesus Christ. The righteous shall compass and circle me about. That's when we get to glory. Listen, if you have been put forth by other Christians, you know, you're going to be in a great clan of other Christians who had the same thing happen to you. I don't know what heaven's going to be like, but for those that hated those that served the Lord and did right and were worldly themselves, they're not going to get rewards and inheritance. They're not going to be that joyful. They're not going to hear a well done. I don't think Paul's going to walk up to a worldly Christian in heaven and start, you know, want to have a great conversation with him. But there have been Christians throughout church history that have been put to prison for the word of God who have been killed for the word of God. Paul's going to want to talk to them. Paul's going to want to introduce himself to those people. How you doing? I'm the apostle Paul. I heard you were put in jail for the word of God. I heard that there was a, uh, the, uh, I don't know what the, there was a church that put you in jail because of the word of God. I heard you printed the Bible in the church, dug up your body. Oh, I can see Paul. Oh, you, you went to church Sunday morning. And baseball. What's baseball? You let your light shine? Where's your crown? Wear a crown. Wear a bright and shiny crown. When, when you serve the Lord here, and the Lord is pleased with you, when we get to glory, there'll be righteous people that are surrounded by you. 
that great cloud of witnesses of the faithful in, in Hebrews chapter 12, of the of the faithful in Hebrews chapter 11. Those guys, you fought the good fight. Glory to God. It's not going to be said for the worldly Christian that gave up. For the Excuse me. For thou shalt dwell, deal, excuse me, thou shalt deal bountifully with me. You realize all the eternal inheritance a Christian is going to get in heaven? Let's look at David. Saul's going to get killed in battle. Was Jonathan and David friends? Yes, they were. They were so close friends that the sodomites use it for sexual perversion, don't they? Where was Jonathan, who was not at the right hand of God, uh, David right now, where was Jonathan? He died with his father in battle. Jonathan never saw David's kingdom. Why? Because he hanged out with the world. Remember the prayers back and forth with Jonathan and David? David said, Thou shalt sit right next to me in my kingdom. Not if you hang out with the world, my friend. Not if you're an enemy of a Christian. What did Jesus tell Paul? Why persecutest thou me? David got a kingdom. David got wives. David had sinned. But David got wives. David got children. David gathered the silver, the gold, the iron, the, the everything needed for that temple. David got to see his son. David didn't die and his son took the throne. David was still living for a time while Solomon was on the throne. David still had loyal subjects to him. David was bountifully blessed because David stayed on the Lord's side and never mind the adultery and never mind the, the murder. For all have sinned come to show the glory of God. All I can say to you is like David and his son, you're going to suffer trouble if you're going to live for God, pray to God, tell God, complain to God, and God will bless it. It may not be a blessing here on the earth, Read Fox's Book of Moderators. Read the story of John Bunyan. You may not get the blessing of bountifulness on this earth, but there'll be bountifulness and blessings if you stay faithful to God. And when your best great friend like Jonathan is not by your side like he should be, he dies. That's a story to be learned. The Bible tells us Jonathan and David had that great friendship, that great love for each other. You know? Jonathan was in the wrong place and hanged out with the wrong people. David remained faithful. David's in a cave. David's going to go from cave one day to throne. And on that throne one day will be the Lord Jesus Christ. And David will be prince in the millennium. Hang in there, David. Hang in there, Christian. If they leave you, know that there's been other Christians with you. If they hate you, what's the Bible say? Quite interesting.